Good morning, Stampers. Happy Friday. Welcome to this week's Facebook Live. My name is Sherry Roth. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Alberta, Canada. And every Friday at 11 a.m. Mountain Time, I go live with a crafting video for you. Okay, I'm just trying to pull you up on my iPad here so I can see your comments. Here we go. All right. Okay, make sure you say hi as you join in so I know who's watching. I always like to see who is joining in and that just reminded me that I forgot to draw a winner for last week's projects. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I will announce that later today. Last week I shared um, four background ideas using the Butterfly Brilliance Bundle. Um, so the lucky winner will get a choice of one of those four cards that I'll send off to him or her. All right, today we are going to play with the Gilded Leafing, which is something I've played with a little bit, but not a ton. Um, so I wanted to pull it out and play with it some more. And because I've been digging into the Friends Are Like Seashells bundles, I thought I would try um, combining the two. So that's what we're gonna do today. I've got two cards to share with you and both of them are kind of background ideas using both of these products. All right, all right, good morning, Shauna and Susan and Mom and Angela. Oh, from Georgetown, Ontario, welcome. And Joy, thanks for sharing, Shauna. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now the first one, I am going to use the embossing folder, so the she the seashells embossing folder. This is part of the Sand and Sea Suite from the January to June mini catalog. I'm gonna combine it with some adhesive sheets and we're gonna create a gorgeous, gorgeous background. Okay, so I have a piece of cardstock here that measures three and three quarters by three and three quarters. I've chosen to use um, Sahara Sand, but you can use any color because we're gonna cover it over. And then I've cut a piece of our adhesive sheets to measure three and three quarters by three and three quarters as well. Now, I know that I have told you in the past that it's always good to, when you use these, to cut them just a smidge smaller so that you don't get your plates gummed up or sticky when you run it through the embossing folder because sometimes if it's a little bit bigger than your cardstock then um, it can leave some adhesive residue on your uh, your cutting plates and that can just cause a big mess but for this particular purpose you either want your cardstock significantly bigger and cut it down to size or you want them exactly the same size okay so i cut mine the exact same size and what I'm gonna do, there is a seam, so this is the easiest way that I've, I have found to apply it. I'm just gonna fold that seam, kind of curl that back on itself, and I'm gonna line it right up with the edge, trying to get it as close as possible to being perfect. See how easy that was? And then I'm gonna do the same on this side, but it right up with the edge so for this particular technique that I'm gonna show you, you want to make sure to get it right up against the edge. You don't want there to be any space in between. And then I'll just peel that off. Okay, so I'll just apply some pressure here. And then I'm gonna check, flip it over. There is a little bit of an overhang here, so I'm going to grab a pair of scissors and trim that off. If I can avoid getting my plate sticky, I will do anything to avoid that because otherwise your cardstock sticks and yeah, it's just, it's it can be a big mess. So I have a pair of scissors that I use just for these kinds of sticky, sticky things. They're titanium stickers and they're, or scissors and they're supposed to be non-stick. Okay, toss that. All right, okay, so now, normally what you would do, thank you for sharing, Joy. Um, good morning, Gail, welcome. 
Okay, so normally what you would do when you use adhesive sheets is you put the sticky side down and you die cut. But we are gonna do things a little bit differently today. So I'm gonna have the adhesive sh sheet side up and I'm going to put it in my folder. So the side with the Stampin' Up! logo, this is the debossed side. So this is going to be where it, rate, it gets raised. So this is the side, you want the side that you want raised facing up. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to position this, let's position it closer to the top. And then I'm gonna close it. So this has the adhesive sheets on the top facing up and I'll bring in my stamp and cut and emboss and platform number one and then platform number four because this is a just a I think it's just a regular folder or is it a 3d folder I can't remember which one this one I think this is a regular one. Well, maybe not, I don't know. You'll have to look in the catalog to see if it's regular. <laughs> or maybe somebody here who's watching knows if it's a regular or 3D. Because I, I can never remember. I think you use this one with the 3D folders, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm getting them confused now because the old style 3D, which used to call, be called dynamic, you need to use a regular plate for. Because they're even thicker than these. I'm pretty sure this is a 3D one because it feels really thick. All right, so now we've got a piece of this beautiful, um, or a piece embossed with this beautiful background. You see that? So it's so pretty, but we are going to get a little fancy with it. We're gonna make it even prettier. So I am going to take my paper piercing tool and I'm gonna peel off this top layer you guys know where I'm going with this? So you just have to kind of get under there. I'm gonna to try to avoid touching as much as I can. Because I wanna make sure that I don't remove any of that adhesive. Okay, so now I have this piece of Sahara sand cardstock that is embossed, just regular, so it's got the raised image, and it's all sticky. The whole piece is sticky. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna bring in a scrap piece of paper, and I've got a sponge that I use just for my gilded leafing, and I have a Ziploc baggie that I keep it in. So this is just used for this. And then I'm gonna take some out and just kind of sprinkle it around. And a little bit does go a long way, but I'm gonna be quite generous. Okay, and then let's use my tweezers here and kind of hold it in place. And then I'm just gonna start rubbing. So in the beginning, it doesn't look like much. It just looks like a big piece of cardstock that is covered with the gilded leafing that is shiny and gold. I've got a little smidge on the side here that's not sticky. Okay, but the more you rub it, and get that excess off, the more detail you can see. And I have a feeling that it's not gonna show up the best on camera, but I will hold it at a few different angles to show you guys what it looks like closer. So now I'm just going around the edges just to remove some of this excess. So at this point you can touch it because it's covered. It's covered with gilded leafing, so it's not sticky anymore. Okay, so let's get this out of the way. Let's put the lid back on this. I pr 
probably should, you know what, I probably should put this away because otherwise I'm going to create a disaster. <laughs> Good morning, Elaine. Okay. I'm going to dump this back in here carefully. You want to conserve this stuff because a little bit goes a long way. We're going to need it again, so I don't need to clean it up fully. Okay, what did I do with the lid? There it is. We're going to bring it back out for the next project. Okay, so now let me bring this up closer so you guys can see. Can you see that beautiful detail on there? So the gilded leafing gives, it gives a ton of texture. Some of it looks matte and some of it looks just a little bit more foily. It's just so beautiful. I just love it. Okay, so then here is a finished card that I did using it. So I matted it onto a piece of mossy meadow, added a, a vellum circle. This greeting is from the many messages dies that is in the, um, the January to June catalog. And then I've added a starfish cut, stamped and cut from Petal Pink, and then some of the seaweed that's in that set as well. And then on the inside, it just has a simple happy birthday with another one of those die cuts. So, I mean, it's super quick and easy, but it's stunning and it's something a little bit unexpected. So I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Now we're going to do something different and this time we're going to use the stamps. Good morning, Le Leanne. Thanks for all the hearts, guys. I love seeing those hearts. Okay, so now we are going to use the stamps and dies and embossing folders on this next one. Okay, so I have got a piece of white cardstock. And I always, when I use my Stamparatus, I always like to have a stamp set underneath just to keep it level. Okay, and these are photopolymer stamps. So I have my black foam mat underneath. I always have a silicone mat that I keep with my Stamparatus to just give just an extra little bit of of height so that I get a nice impression and then I've gone ahead and I've got these mounted I've been using this stamp set lots this month because over in my membership group this is what we're focusing on so I've left it on a, a Stamparatus plate pretty much all month long I have one with my butterflies and one with this one um, and I have a couple extra mats because these are great to just you can just remove them and store them like this so if I know that I'm going to use a set and I have it lined up the way I want it, I'll just keep them on there for weeks and weeks. Um, and remember, you can use both sides too, right? So you can use this side and you can use this side. So you've actually got four surfaces with your Stamparatus plates. Okay, so little tricks on that I shared over in my VIP group the other day um, on getting these lined up. So what I did was I went ahead and I cut just from scrap cardstock. I used the dies. So these dies, this big die to cut out a, a template. And then I ran it through with the embossing folder to give it texture. And what I do is I will, let's move this out of the way. I will line this up. Okay. So because I have these already lined up on here, I've actually gone ahead and I've drawn marks around, let me bring this up closer, so that I know where it's positioned. But if you're just starting out and you don't have anything lined up, you don't need to do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna line this up. Okay, so just pretend that that hasn't been done and none of these have been mounted. So then I'm gonna take this guy off just so I can show you what I do. And I line it up with the texture that I can see underneath. And I kind of get, I get on top of it. You can probably see my head. And I get go around the side to try to get it just right. And it, there is some room for, for error. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'll close this up. Okay, so you'll want to do that with each one of these stamps in order to get it lined up. The reason I added the texture, because you're probably thinking you don't need to add the texture, but I found it easier to line up with the texture because it gives you something else that's visible from underneath the stamp to see 
to make it easier to line up. Okay, so now I've got all of them lined up and I can move that away. I can move my template away. This piece is going to go on here. I know that I have lots of space at the top, so I can just, oh, wrong side. So I can just position my magnet up there. Aw, oh, thanks, Shauna. I'm glad you, you, you're taking something away from this. Okay, so I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. All right, okay, so I'm happy with that. And now what we're gonna do is, okay, let me think here. How did I do this before? You know what, I'm doing this completely backwards. Okay, <laughs> because the last, I, I, now I can't remember how I did this. I just did it last night. Okay, let me think this through here. We want to, oh, you know what, I didn't stamp. That's why I'm getting confused. Okay, so we're not going to stamp today. Um, so I just shared all those tricks. I'm sure you're gonna find them helpful anyways if you have this, this um, suite or uh, plan on purchasing that suite. There's some tips on how you can stamp, die cut, and emboss so that you can get all three on here, okay? But today, we aren't using the stamps. <laughs> You'll see why I'm confused in a minute here, okay. All right, so we are going to take this piece and we are going to die cut it and then we are going to emboss it. So if you wanted to do all three, let's pretend this is stamped and then you would just line this up and we are going to cut it, okay? So if you're using all three layers because they are meant to coordinate, you want to stamp first, then die cut, then emboss. So we're gonna pretend this is stamped You know what, I'm still confused. Now I think I did stamp it. You know what, we're gonna, we're gonna go back with my initial, initial thought. I'm sorry guys, I'm so confused this morning. I'm pretty sure I did stamp it because I used heat and stick powder. Okay. I was playing around with a whole bunch of different things yesterday and some things worked and some things didn't. So I think that's why I'm confused. I'm pretty sure I did stamp. Okay, so we're gonna take Versamark ink and let's bring back this. <laughs> yes, Gail, it does fit. So Gail said she, she uh, it's good to see the old magnetic plate fits into the new stamp embossing machine and it does fit. Okay, so I'm just making sure that this is all really well inked. And then I'm gonna stamp, stamp it down. And Versamark is quite a sticky ink. So you'll find that you really wanna try to get your stamped image really, really well inked and make sure that you get a really good impression the first time because when you lift it up, it will lo most likely see how it lifts up your cardstock. So it's difficult to re-stamp again, okay? So now we're done with the Stamparatus. We're gonna move this away and we are gonna bring in the heat and stick powder. Now, it's been years since I've used heat and stick. We carried this years and years ago. I don't remember noticing a smell to it. This has a distinct smell to it. It's not a very pleasant smell. Um, it smells, I don't know, chemically. It just, it's just, it, yeah, it's not a very nice smell. So I'm gonna dump it or cover it with heat and stick powder. which for those of you who may not be familiar with heat and stick powder, it is, it, once you heat it, it turns into a glue. Okay. Just tap off those, that excess. All right, so it just, right now, it just looks like white embossing powder. 
I'm going to clean up my mess here and then we will heat it and you'll see that it'll turn a little bit shiny and it will be tacky. I'm just going to wipe my surface and get rid of some of this powder. I'm making a big mess today. <laughs> it might be a little early for wine, <laughs> Joy, but I agree that might help. Now let's just hope that this works from now on. Now that I figured out what I'm doing, hopefully it will, it will actually turn out. But they, I have a sample so I can show you if it doesn't. Okay, so now we are gonna get our surface prepared because you do wanna work relatively quickly. So I'm gonna bring this back. I'm not gonna open just this just yet because I need to heat this. So I'm gonna reach my heat tool. It's just out of my reach here. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. So I'm going to try to blow it straight out so that I don't make a mess with the stuff that's on my work surface. I got my sponge handy. I've got my gilded leafing. Now the trick to heat and stick is you want to heat it a very little bit just until it turns from powder to that shiny liquid so that it's tacky. If you overheat it, then it's not sticky anymore and nothing will stick to it. Okay, so I'm gonna turn this up. I'm gonna heat up my heat tool a little bit first. Okay, and now I'm just gonna go, go over it. I can see that it's starting to turn shiny. I'm trying not to hold it in one place for too long. But I do want to make sure that I get all of the, the areas. Okay. And then we're going to take this, open this up. and then rub it on here. And it's really, it's really quite subtle. I love the look of it. Okay, we'll just rub off the excess. So I've got a little spot here that I don't know if maybe I overheated it or if I didn't heat it enough. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my heat tool and I'm going to reheat it. Okay, I don't think that's gonna do anything to that one spot. But we'll give it a shot. See if we can get a little bit more on there. Okay. All right. So now that doesn't look like much. I mean, it's pretty. If you could cut out these indiv individual shells and use them. It doesn't look like much like that. But let's finish this off so I can show you what it can look like. Okay, let's see if we can get some of this back in here. So this, I've seen a lot of people use like big containers for this. Um, then you wouldn't necessarily need to have a scrap piece and try to dump it back in the container like I have. And it probably wouldn't make as much of a mess <laughs> as what mine's making. But with us moving, I just did not want to put it into a big container and then have to find somewhere to store that big container. So I've been trying to make do with it in a little container. And it's been going okay. It just makes a mess, that's all. Okay, so now we are going to cut it. So for those of you who are just joining in, we are playing with some gilded leafing today and this friends are like seashells bundle. All right, so here you'll see 
that I've got it lined up so that it's pretty close. So the Stamparatus is like, it makes doing things like this so easy. Once you get it lined up, it's perfect. Like everything fits so beautifully in there. Uh, the difference between this and gold embossing powder, it has a completely different look. It's it's almost like a var variegated look. Like it's, um, how can I explain? This The first sample that I did here, this one, you can see the difference. Like it's not, there's some matte gold and then some shiny gold. Like it's not a consistent gold pattern so it does give a very different look than gold embossing powder so when you're doing something like this you could definitely replace that gold this with gold embossing powder um, but you wouldn't get that I, I don't know how to explain it like there's just it's got a different look like it looks different here than it does does over here it's just a, a more variegated look that's the that's the best way that I can ex describe it Okay, so I'm peeling off the backing here. We don't need these bits. Distressed, yeah, yeah, almost distressed, like a vintagey kind of look. That's a great way to describe it, Gail. Okay, so I popped that out. Now we could leave it like that. It's pretty, but we're gonna take it a step further. So now I'm gonna take out this plate and bring in this one and now we're going to do the embossing so I'm gonna put this on this is really easy to line up I tend to just use a couple of these ones at the top and then I'll line it up with the ones at the bottom I don't worry about the big things I worry I kind of just pay attention to kind of around the edges of the seaweed and then I'm gonna close this up and we're gonna emboss this and this just takes it a step further. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Reg. All right. So now, not only do we have this beautiful gold look, but we also have texture added to it. And I'm sure that it's not showing up super well on camera. I'm trying to move it at different angles and let it catch up here so I can see what you guys are seeing. But it's got texture, it's got that gold vintagey kind of look, and then it's die cut. I just love how all three of those, the stamps, the ink, or the stamps, the dies, and the embossing folder coordinate. So then what do you do with this? Well, here is another wedding card because I need to stock up on some wedding cards. Here's another wedding card that I created using it. So I did white on white and then I used the Love and Laughter Forever After. This is from the, I think it's called the Forever Greenery. Um, I can't, it's in, the, I don't know if that's the sweet name or if that is the stamp set name. But, and that I embossed with gold. So can you see the difference, it is a solid metallic gold look compared to this is more, exactly like Gail said, more of a distressed look. Okay, and then I tucked in some gold ribbon and some gold threads, added a little gold foil and then some gold glitter enamel dots. And it's a beautiful card. Isn't it pretty? So that's kind of what you could do. So this one here, this it's a little bit lacking in the gold foil up here. So probably what I would do is I just put my greeting up here. So maybe you have a greeting strip that goes straight across. Like there's always a creative solution to little things that go wrong. But I think that's kind of okay too. It makes it look a little bit grainy. Kind of like it's it's worn down with years of having the sand and the water run over it, right? So I think it adds to the project. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. So there's two new techniques, well new, maybe they're new to you. They were new to me, I had never done them. Um, so this one uses the stamps, the heat and stick, and the gilded leafing. And then this one uses the adhesive sheets 
and then the embossing folder and then the gilded leafing so pretty I know right I thought Reg I thought you know what when I was looking at this suite I thought you know well especially when I added the gold I thought you know what wouldn't this make a great destination wedding card not that everybody anybody's doing destination weddings right now but um, I thought it would be great for a destination wedding just because most people go to the beach when they go away to get married so I thought it would be kind of fun all right so I will post pictures and all the measurements and everything and a, the replay of this video up on my blog if you want to refer to it all right so thanks so much for joining me today guys I will see you next week have a fabulous weekend